and welcome to the World Advanced Therapies and Regenerative Medicine Congress in the Free Zone. My name is Freya Lees, I'm the editor of BridgeBedNet and I'm your host for today. I'm very pleased to be joined by Jeff Ross from Mirror Matrix. Jeff, thank you very much for being here today. Oh, it's great to be here. So for those people who may not be familiar with Mirror Matrix, can you tell us a little bit about the company and how you came to be involved? Sure. So Miro Matrix is a biotechnology company focused on regenerative medicine. Our mission is grand, but it's essentially to bioengineer transplantable organs to eliminate the organ transplant waiting list. Um, so I came to Miro Matrix about eight years ago, I actually was hired as the VP of product development and was responsible for the technology transfer of the technology out of the University of Minnesota, but also looking at what the commercial potential of, of that technology was and actually bringing our first two products, Miro Mesh and Miro Derm, uh, through manufacturing, through FDA clearance, and onto the market before becoming CEO about two years ago. Fantastic. So, obviously, Miro Matrix is trying to, trying to meet the unmet need of shortage of organs for transplantation. So, why is there such a shortage for organs that we can put in people? I mean, unfortunately, it's, it's a tremendous shortage. So, in the U.S., there's about 120,000 patients on the waiting list. Uh, in throughout the EU, it's over 100,000 as well. So, you know, we have almost a quarter of a million patients who today need an organ transplant for life-saving technology. Unfortunately, the donation and the system that's out there can't meet that need. So even in the U.S., while there's 120,000 patients on that list, it's estimated there's probably well over a million patients who could benefit from the therapy. Because with 22 patients dying each day who are on the list, why would we add more patients mm -hmm. if, we, if we truly have this large supply issue? So our mission is really look at it instead of going the cadaveric, you know, uh, receiving an organ from a deceased donor, can we actually bioengineer an organ with that notion of someday actually creating organs that are, are customizable to individual patients? So we could take your cells out, put them onto the scaffold, our scaffold, re-engineer that organ, and provide you a kidney, a lung, a heart, um, that you would no longer need immuno, re, re, uh, immunotherapies for. That's kind of the holy grail in transplant therapy. Wow, so you mentioned you know, putting a patient's own cells in a, in a decellularized organ. Um, what are the advantages of using decellularized organs as a basis for this treatment? Yeah, maybe if we take a step back. And so Miro Matrix, we're really founded on this technology called perfusion decellularization and then recellularization. And the notion of that is, is actually take an existing organ, perfuse a mile, we cannulate it, and that's where the perfusion comes in. We use the native vasculature to actually perfuse a mild detergent through it, essentially washes out all the cells. It leaves us with this perfect, pristine matrix. Um, I say it's kind of analogous to remodeling a house. If you think about a house and the scaffold that's inside of it, you think about the dry raw or the sheet rock, you were going to remodel and you pull all that out, that's like the cells. What's left is all of the structure. Um, but more importantly, architecture, right? A kitchen's still a kitchen, a bedroom is still a bedroom, and all that plumbing is still intact. The same thing exists inside our organs. We take an, an existing organ that nature already created, simply remove all the cellular material. Now we have that perfect blueprint, that perfect scaffold to now take cells and reintroduce them. So our first product, we actually take cells from organs that are unsuitable for transplant. So for every organ that is transplanted today, there's about eight that don't quite meet the criteria, whether they're in cut, nicked, whether they had longer ischemia time, whatever the reason, we're able to isolate out the healthy cells of many of those organs and then recellerize our scaffold with them. That allows us to immediately um, have access and develop these organs for transplant. Now the downside of that is is that those patients will still need immunosuppression. The upside is now we're able to treat thousands of patients who otherwise couldn't receive a plan. Now our second generation product, which will take longer to get through the regulatory system, is that notion of someday taking cells from a patient or from a super donor, uh, differentiating those and then seeding that decellularized organ to then reanimate or re-engineer that organ but now it would be from that patient's own cells. So now you've really met that holy grail of transplant in our second generation product would be where we could implant that back in. And the notion would be your body shouldn't see that as foreign anymore because it's derived of your cells. Okay, well, that certainly seems very simple. Um, what obstacles still remain before this is reality? Yeah, yeah what's, in, you know, 
it's great when you hear that, right? Because it's like, wow, that sounds amazing. But the, the notion I get often is, that sounds really sci-fi. That's really neat. Talk to me in 50 years. So our whole notion was, no, it, it's, it's much closer than we think. And to prove that, we wanted to de-risk it. And we kind of broke it down into four different buckets we had to prove out. First one was, I talked about decelerizing an organ. Now, we already know there's a shortage of human organs. So starting with a human organ and decelerizing, it doesn't seem like a good potential to go forward mm -hmm. to build new organs because we're still going to be limited in the number of organs. So what we looked at is, how about if we take it from a pig? We already know that there's multiple medical devices on the products on the market today that are derived from pig tissue. They have good safety profiles and heart valves, other types of tissues have been on the market for years. And if we look at a, starting with the pig organ, because of the food supply chain, there's thousands and thousands of organs that are discarded each day that are in pristine, perfect shape. So our notion was, why don't we start with the pig organ? Anatomically, it's very similar. Sizes can be very similar to a human organ. And initiate and use that. Now the open question was, that's great, you have this unlimited supply of organs, but are they immunogenic, right? I talked about putting human cells back on there. That's great, but if our body rejects the scaffold, we're gonna have an issue. So the first step was, let's prove that perfusion decelerization is effective, but at the same time, it's non-immunogenic, our final product. So we actually commercialized and took whole porcine livers, perfusion decelerized those, and created two commercial products. The first was mural mesh for soft tissue reinforcement for hernia repair. And the second product is called a product called Miro Derm for wound care. Both of those products have been on the market for years now. We just wrapped up two prospective uh, clinical studies on those products as well. So now what we have is a beautiful safety profile, right? Thousands of patients have been implanted with porcine perfusion decelerized liver matrix. And we haven't had any adverse events associated with anything immune related. So now we've got this nice safety profile to say, you know what, we feel good that we can start with this matrix. The next step is, prove that you can revascularize the substrate or the matrix. So what I mean by that is I talked about all the plumbing is still inside that organ. Mm -hmm. To make an organ effective, we've got to be able to transplant it back in, which means yeah. surgeons need to anastomose in those large vessels and allow blood to be immediately perfused. In. What we know is that if you had a naked matrix with no cells in there, it's going to clot or thrombose immediately. So the first step was, can we just revascularize it? Can we put endothelial cells or vascular specific cells back into the lumen so then when we implant that back in we can get long-term perfusion so we've achieved that we actually wrote that up and it's being submitted for publication right now long-term data associated with human endothelial cells back into a, into a liver matrix and being transplanted back into a liver. so we de-risk that notion right so the next thing that we're working on right now is now let's put in the liver specific uh, functional cells, transplant those back into the organ. Do we still have patency? Are we seeing functionality? And we're in the middle of those studies right now, but the data is looking really, really good. So, you know, what we've done along the way is how do we de-risk it? How do we show the matrix is okay? Can we revascularize it? Can we get the function back? And now what we're looking at is can we get functionality back inside a large animal model to the point that we're able to remove the native organ inside of that large animal model, place in our bioengineered organ, and demonstrate functionality. That's our last hurdle before we're able to submit to the FDA and start working through our IND process, and then that'll evolve into human clinical studies. Exciting. Well, something else exciting, which I know very recently happened, um, is you were awarded the Kidney X Prize. Congratulations. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yeah. what the prize is and sort of what it means to you? Yeah, we're really excited to be able to receive this. So we were one of 15 recipients out of 165 recipients um, to receive a prize from Kidney X. And Kidney X is the phase one prize. It's called Redesign Dialysis. And essentially it's that notion that dialysis has been around for 50 years. And while it's gotten a lot smaller in terms of how the therapy is delivered, the clinical outcomes just aren't there. If we look at the five-year survivability of most patients on dialysis, it's less than 50%. Five-year survivability of patients on, uh, with a transplant is over 90%. So there's this huge chasm. And um, Health and Human Services, along with uh, ASN, American Society of Nephrology, launched this initiative. And what was key to that is how do we innovate and get more technology to provide these patients with new types of solutions and new types of therapy. So 
we're honored to have received that. And, and you know, part of HHS is also CMS, the reimbursement arm, FDA, NIH. So it's really bringing together the right entities to really help accelerate that. So for us to be recognized at that level, that our technology holds holds potential to have an impact and recognize it just it was a great honor for us. I'm sure. Um, so finally, what can we expect from Mirror Matrix in the next few years? Yeah. After more FDA approvals, more products, what's next? So we're trudging along. I mean we're we're actively, you know, looking at that demonstrating that functionality in large animal model and then entering the human clinical studies. So I mean our goal in the next three to five years is to be in human clinical studies with our liver and our kidney therapies to be able to start bringing these new technologies really to them, ultimately to the marketplace, but more importantly to the patients that need it and just provide a new alternative um, so it's not as dire as it is today. Fantastic. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us. And we'll be back with more interviews from World Advanced Therapies very soon.